Hey guys, been a couple weeks since the last video because I was very busy with F1 Esports and had to be with the team. Uh, I'd say it went, went, went very well because Red Bull Racing Esports is Formula 1 Esports Champion 2019, so congrats to the guys for an exceptional season. Um, I want to go into how to set up Motec today and actually it is fairly easy. Let's start with a forum post in the official Assetto Corsa forum. I will link it in the description. The first thing you'll have to do is to download the Motec software, either via the direct link, and since the post is a little older, older just go to the la latest releases page, get the latest version. You can get the pro version, it's free, there's no limitations. So you get everything you want to play with. Install the program and this is it in that step. The next thing you want to do is, um, once you open it, you won't see that list. And for Motec to work, you need to have a workbook which knows how to interpret all the different channels that the game puts into an actual telemetry file. The thing is, all games name those channels a little different, so you will need a workbook for each game that you use Motec for. Um, ACC was so kind to already include a working workbook into their game, and therefore you go to the, well, let me see here, like users, your username, documents folder, etc. set the course of competizione, then you go to Motec, then you go to workspaces and this is already in there. All you want to do is copy both of them and then go to your Motec folder also within the documents folder, which is down here. Then you want deeper and then there's workspaces. You go in there and just copy paste both the folder and the file in here and you should be good to then open Motec and you will see the base ACC folder in here, or if you don't, just go open an existing workspace. And if it's not in here, go browse. And then you go back to your folder where you've just copied into the workspace. Uh, that one go inside, open that workspace file and you should be good to go. Then it opens and at first, of course, it is blank. That is because you don't have any data file loaded yet. And this is what you do here, but another step needs to be done first. And therefore I actually have to start the game while I talk you through something else that you need to do. Because the standard setups that are in the game in the garage uh, don't have the telemetry turned on by default. So you will have to go there and do it on your own, but it's super easy yeah unreal engine i know let's just go so just starting any session right now to show you it's it doesn't really matter which track in car we're on uh once you're here go to the garage go to any setup that you have and the important bit is under the electronics tab and then you go to telemetry labs which you have to well increase for uh, every everything above zero creates a file and it creates a file with as many labs as you set up here. So if you just put it to five, but do six lab, labs, the sixth lab will be in a new file. Can make sense if you do a lot of setup adjustments and then you want to do five labs with a certain setup and then you want a new file to be created automatically when you do a setup change after those five labs. So you have different Motec files for different setups, but you can as well go to 30, do all the changes within one file and then compare the labs within this telemetry file. This is it. All you have to do in the game is that. So we can shut it down again. Yeah, a bit faster. Let's shut it down. That's a lot of exit clicking and more exit clicking and more exit clicking. And now this file has been created and it will be inside the asset of course uh, under the documents folder, Motag, and here's all the telemetry files, only always named by date and time. So they're quite hard to differentiate. So I suggest sorting by date created. Uh, so once you're in here and you have 
load it up the workbook you, all you need to do is add a file because we don't have any data here yet so there's an icon there's an icon it's kind of repetitive you can use either then all you have to do is go into that folder now i've been just working on iRacing so this won't work in this workbook let's go back to documents i set the course uh, go to motag uh actually it's in there already and then we have all the tracks and cars I've been driving. You can actually see that there has been a change in the file output because at the beginning, when the game was released, all venues were called after the cars and the events were the tracks. And now we have, well, at least the venue has changed the event state the same. And then we can just load any lab or, or multic file that we created. So even Motec files here for the session sessions that I just loaded up, even though I didn't do a lap. Um, don't be confused the first time you open it, those t fastest lap time here won't be correct, but after you've opened it once, it will be, oh, I'll just show like it does here at the mark lap and it will find the actual fastest. So let's open it up for now. And I'll, right away we can see some data shown and there's actually some problem Right here, it doesn't show RPM because I've been working um, with another file from another game where the RPMs are named differently. So let's remove the names uh, RPM channel from here because that doesn't work. And take a look at the channels that are inside the telemetry file by ACC. The thing is, there isn't an awful lot. I think iRacing has 300 channels, which is well, not entire and not entirely, uh, entirely realistic as not every car collects as many data as you have in the iRacing files. But for ACC, this is something that they wanted to give us that also the real teams have, so we don't get anything on top that the real teams have access to. So I was missing the RPMs, and the only difference here is that the, the channel is not called RPM, but RPMs. So it wasn't able to find it earlier. Now I just add it into here and we'll have the RPMs back in here. Uh, something people have been asking about were these track maps and how to create them. So let me delete them for now and create them from scratch because it's well, it's easy, but uh, the standard track map has a couple limitations and you have to do a certain change to see mm, different data from, um, say, throttle and brake on the same map. And I'll show you right now how that works. So first we want to create that track report that brings up the map right away. Uh, the map is created from a G, like so acceleration data in all axes. Uh, so this is something you don't have to worry about, but you can already see there is an issue here with some channels being unavailable. So the brake status, you can't find the channel because in I don't know, whatever Multic usually, usually works with, the brake channel seems to be named differently. So we just double click it uh, and find the channel for it. And as soon as we did that, it will be all right, let's stick with this for now. Uh, let's do the same with the throttle position because it hasn't been found. There it is. Let's press OK. Uh, let's remove the G-Force longitude. Don't need that for this one. Uh, let's remove the labels because they're kind of distracting. So all these numbers around here will disappear. And now we see, uh, yeah, well, not quite the map that we had there before all we see now is okay the brake is being used but not how much and then we have maybe two three more colors telling us something about the throttle if we look at the legend on the right side so i think we want to add a little more detail here and let's start with the brake and if you see right here there's only one color assigned for everything that is above zero which is a little few, so every time you touch the brake, uh, the bar goes up to red. So pretty much there's no differentiation between 10, 20, 30, 40% braking. It's only on or off in this. So what we want to 
have is a little more detail. By that, we go by evenly spaced bands, is how they call it. And let's say we want 50 bands. I'll just click summer, and then we'll see you have a load of more values now, which all should get a different color. This all still looks rather the same. So we want to have a gradient. And the gradient is now going from dark purple to, well, bright purple to white, which kind of isn't the right color for a break. And so we go for custom. And I'd say a break should be red, if you agree. And then we put it on OK, press OK. So now we have way more detail, but somehow all the acceleration and throttle position has disappeared. But we can at least see, sorry, let's move the car a little further. So we actually zoom in where the car is with a scroll wheel on your mouse. Um, and then you can see uh, the brake is, well, press a little here, a little further and done 100% all the way up into somewhere around here. If you look very closely, it starts releasing here. And then once the color changes, it becomes white as I go out of the brake on that one. So why doesn't it show the throttle? Because it's still in here, right? So let's take a look here. And you can also see, uh, maybe we may, maybe take another step. Let's move the throttle up so it shows the throttle first. Now we only have throttle and the whole brake information is missing. And all we have is three different colors for the brake. So coming around the straight, we of course have 100% throttle. Then goes blue and gray, and this is basically it. And this is because, same problem as with the brakes, we don't have enough bands available. We have only a band, maybe it's easier to show in here, a band that says green for everything above 85% throttle, uh, blue for everything between 15 and 85, and gray for everything below 15% throttle. And I find this a bit too rough to really judge what everyone is doing. There, so we want to do the same as with a break. Do 50, uh, create 50 different bands. Now the color is off again. We want this to be a gradient and red wouldn't exactly be useful as we used it already for the break. So let's take green for the throttle. Press OK. And now we have some more detail in here as well as you go along. Not as detailed as the is the brake. Maybe, yeah, here's more variation, playing with the throttle to see here as well in that very long left-hander. Um, but still, we are want, we want to have both on the same map. So let's go to properties again. And without talking too much about the reasons, because literally I have no idea, the problem is why we're not getting anything is because we have a channel too much. So we need to actually remove the channel from zero to 2% break and that should sort the issue if you move the break on top or if you take out the same channel from uh, the throttle if I'm ah. let's move the break up and it'll work yes so now I, it took me a couple minutes before I did the video to figure out how I did my map there, but eventually uh, I made it work. So now you can actually see there's, I'm coming with full throttle and moving into the brake, going out of the brake and then back into the, thr into the throttle. Um, there's a slight risk that we have some overlap that isn't properly shown on, on this map. So we can add just as a security mechanism, so to say some more data and we do this via add. Uh, I want to gauge, uh, which will be a bar. And that bar is supposed to be a throttle. Um, let's make this, this looks a bit horizontal, so let's make it vertical. Um, let's give it a color. We chose green for the throttle, so this kind of makes sense. And since it's vertical, it should rather look like this, right? Uh, let's add, or maybe can I copy paste that actually? Copy, uh, paste. So I have two, th right, so and all now, oops, all I have to do now is go to the properties, change from throttle to brake, 
and we will have two bars showing si another track I can show. There's different layers in Moltec and the track map is really big layer so it is on top of everything once you click it so you have to actually move it into the background so all the small layers are visible on top. Let's align these. You can see the snaps so it's easy to make things look uh, well, pretty would be an exaggeration, but not too odd. And now as we go through the lab, we can do this manually. We, oh, it's purple. Let's change that. Display. Oh, that's why I missed, missed the red one. There you go. You can see that I go from throttle to brake. And once I'm out of the brake, the throttle increases again. So we can just make sure right here, here's an overlap that isn't actually shown stop it that isn't actually shown on the map uh, we can also without doing this manually let's slow down a little so we can see it in a bit more detail just press play choose the speed and then we can have the dot drive along so to say and you can now see I'm going into the break and then you see the throttle popping up when uh, on all the downshifts where the game does a throttle blip and you can see where, as I'm going out of the brake once the steering wheel turns. So maybe let's stop right here as I was saying steering wheel we can add that as well of course there is another gauge uh, which is the steering wheel. Let's find the channel for it. It's probably something with steer. Um, is there a wheel as well? No wheel speed so steering angle and let's hope this is actually the steering angle of the wheel and not the tire. 100 degree looks very much like the wheel. Uh, we can have that in any size. So uh, let's add that here. Make it equally big. And now let's drive through the braking zone again. And then you can see, uh, probably, haven't tried it before, that once I start turning into the corner, I will start releasing the brakes to not overload the front uh, tire and prevent the inside one from locking up. Let's take a look how that looks. The downshifts again and as we approach the corner turning starts now and soon after I'm going slightly out of the brake. So there's something you can I mean, this is something you can see in the game as well, but kind of gives you more options to go back and forth here and really, really see how it evolves, right? So this is how you set up Motec to you. This is just a standard workbook that F Set of Corsa has. You can inv individualize it a lot once you get the hang of it. And also showing you how the track map works. I put all the links in the description. Uh, should there be any questions, just ask in the comments. I'll take care of you. Bye-bye.